at 11. Police officers facing questions tonight after ripping a child from his mother's arms. And another package stolen from a front porch, only this time it's the Amazon delivery driver. We find out how companies like Amazon screen these guys. Police say he's done it again. A pharmacist caught putting a camera in an employee bathroom is accused of doing the same thing at his new job. Plus a spectacular sight in the sky, caught on camera. Your news starts now. Our top story tonight, the search for a gunman who killed an 18-year-old in a Clark County parking lot. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. Good evening. I'm Dan Haggerty. By all accounts, witnesses did everything they could to try and save this young man's life. KGW's Mike Benner has the following has been following this story for us all night. He's live in the Hazel Dell area with the very latest. Mike. Yeah, Dan, the scene here at Highway 99 and Northeast 63rd Street has been cleared. The initial part of this investigation has been wrapped up. It is revealed that the uh, victim and suspect knew each other and the search for that suspect continues tonight. Just after dark in Hazeldale, detectives photograph a deadly shooting scene in the middle of a busy parking lot. It was very distinct, just pop, pop, pop. Rachel Purcell works near the shooting scene and raced out to help. She says she found the 18-year-old victim slumped over the steering wheel of a Jeep Cherokee. I first tried getting his attention, uh, slapping his face, see if he was responsive, and he wasn't. Um, then I asked his friends to pull him out of the Jeep, and I started doing chest compressions, and just not responsive. It was too late. The victim died at the scene. Very concerned. Uh, you notice there's quite a large uh, sheriff's office response. Sergeant Brent Waddell of the sheriff's office says the shooting may be tied to a drug deal, meaning the victim and suspect know each other in some capacity. Just sad, especially this time of year. Couldn't imagine being a parent, so. Yeah, it's a bummer. As the gravity of the situation sets in for those who witnessed what happened, Someone had to get out there and do something. Rachel Purcell finds peace in knowing she did everything she could to help. It's something you just got to do. Someone's in help, you just got to do it. It's worth mentioning there was at least one person with the victim when he was gunned down. Couple that with the fact that this happened in a very busy parking lot, a lot of businesses around. Detectives are extremely relieved that nobody else was hurt or killed. We can tell you that the suspect took off from the scene in a vehicle and again has not yet been captured. Anyone with information about this case should contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office. Back to you. Well, Rachel deserves a lot of credit for jumping in to help. Thank you, Mike. A pharmacist accused of hiding a camera in his workplace restroom now faces more charges. Police say he did the same thing at his new job. Johnny Chan was arrested last month, accused of putting cameras in an employee restroom at a Kaiser Permanente lab. Now the 34 year olds accused of putting hidden cameras in the restroom at the Banana Republic store at Cascade Station. That camera allegedly recorded more than 170 videos involving 27 different victims. But this was an employee's only restroom, so police don't think any customers were recorded. Court documents show Chan is also accused of putting a miniature camera on his shoe that he used to take pictures up women's skirts. Chan is now being held on $2 million bail. All right, let's go to our big story breakdown tonight. An Amazon delivery driver drops off one package and snags another as we dig into the vetting process for companies like Amazon with these delivery drivers. So the Washington County Sheriff's Office says Perez Johnson was making deliveries in the Aloha neighborhood last night. But when he dropped off one of those packages, he saw another on the porch and he decided to take that one instead. Now, what he didn't know was that the package was part of the Washington County's bait package program. Deputies hide GPS monitors inside Amazon and Postal Service boxes. Then they leave them on porches and wait for somebody to swipe them. He basically told deputies that he had made a delivery to that address before and he came back last night and took a package from the porch. We are hearing from Amazon. They sent us a statement. It says this behavior is unacceptable, does not reflect the high standards we have for delivery partners. This individual is no longer delivering Amazon packages. Amazon says that they run multi state criminal background checks on independent contractors like Johnson and review their driving records. They say in this case, Johnson did pass the background check. 
Counselors were on hand at a Marion County School District today. Jefferson High School, south of Salem, went into lockdown after a student took his own life on campus. It happened on a ball field while students were in class. A crisis team came in immediately. Marion County has seen two other student suicides this year at nearby Sprague High School. The principal of that school came to Jefferson today to help. When you've managed um, a message as uh, as painful as this one that no adult is prepared to have with a child, um, it helps to have someone who's who's shared that message before. Um, and so we've been able to support Jefferson School District through this process. In Oregon, suicide is the second leading cause of death in 10 to 24 year olds. There is help available 24 hours a day if you or anyone you know needs someone to talk with. You can always call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. The number's on your screen. It's 1-800-273-8255. That's 273-TALK. They're open 24-7. You can also text 273-TALK. New tonight, Oregon City Police, they're offering a reward to help find the person or people who have been putting nails in the road. Apparently this has been happening since January. Police got the most recent report just last week. Nails have been found on Lynn Avenue, South Center Street and Washington Street in the areas you see on your screen there. The suspects appear to be targeting early morning commuters, so they're hitting the road between, you know, 530 and 730 in the morning. Police are also asking people who live in that area, check your surveillance cameras to see if you might have captured anything. That was the sound of a mortar going off in North Portland. Police just released this video today, hoping to find the suspects. This happened October 14th at about two in the morning on North Chicago Avenue and Smith Street. The person shot the firework out of the driver's side of a vehicle. There is now a $2,500 reward for information that leads to an arrest. A fire at a Seattle area Jehovah's Witness Hall has now been ruled arson. The building in Thurston County was set on fire last Friday. Thankfully, no one was inside at the time. The minister says that the building can be replaced. No matter what our religious persuasion is, we have to cope with the problems that we face. And so the focus of our uh, ministry is really to continue to do that based on what the Bible says. And this is uh, just the latest in what's been a string of attacks. It's the fifth attack now since March against the Jehovah's Witness community in Thurston County, Washington. Just terrible for them. Mm -hmm. So there's a local nonprofit we want to tell you about. It's been struggling to keep up right now after getting a record number of requests from families who need help this holiday season. They are doing such good work. The Christmas Family Adoption Foundation is hoping those who can help will help them meet the need before it's too late this season. KGW's Catherine Cook sat down with a nonprofit's founder tonight to learn just how they are helping people. Catherine? Well, Laurel, it's not just with toys. This program tries to care for the entire family during the holidays, whether it's by repairing a car so parents can get to work or providing warm clothes and food. Volunteers say most families who ask for that help are choosing between those needs and making rent. 2007. We're all at a wrapping party there. Mike Burright can't believe how far his nonprofit Christmas Family Adoption Foundation has come. If you want to adopt a family, you would go here. It started in 2002. That's when Burright learned a family he met was about to lose everything and couldn't afford Christmas gifts for their kids. And I thought that's not right. So Burright took photos of the kids and copied their wish lists. He sent flyers to his friends and asked them to help him help that family. On Christmas morning, I happened to have a Santa suit, so I put that on, and it took three cars to deliver all the gifts to the family. The next year, Burright and volunteers helped eight families, and Christmas Family Adoption Foundation was born. Last year, they helped 752 families with food, personal needs, and presents. To see a mother watching her children as we hand out the gifts to the kids, uh, break into tears is not uncommon. Every family helped is nominated and vetted by an outside agency to verify need. And every year, Burright says they've been able to help all of them until now. 
Well, this year has been very frustrating for me. They got nominations for a record 1,200 families, but can only afford to sponsor 700 of them. They're still trying to raise money to cover the last 50 families on the list. At this point, we've warned them that we may not be able to get them help. But Burright isn't giving up. He's hoping for a last-minute flood of cash donations and adopting angels to step up. Portland has always been a very generous city once they know the need. If you want to help, we've posted a link to the Christmas Family Adoption Foundation website on KGW.com. And even if you can't donate money or personally sponsor a family, they also need volunteers to help shop and wrap presents. Back to you. It is always so heartwarming to hear about people like Mike Burright with such a great yeah. big hearts. And I think once people do get involved and start giving this time of year, mm -hmm. it gets kind of contagious. You want to do it. You want people Absolutely. in your life to do it. So hopefully this report will help. We have a lot of angels out there. Thank you, Catherine. Next, a local couple trying to get to their hotel in Brussels gets stuck in the middle of a riot. He, dro he basically dropped you into a war zone and left you. What they had to do to finally get to safety. Then it's an incident. You see it here. It has police in Brooklyn under scrutiny tonight. What witnesses say le uh, led up to this, an officer pulling a one-year-old away from her mother. Plus, the state has released its plan today for the big one. But do you have your plan yet? The important questions to answer before the earthquake hits. And this is not the biggest storm we're going to see this fall and winter, but we've got rain rolling into the coast right now, already raining up at Astoria. And there's a new weather advisory in the valley. It may not be for what you think. We'll talk about that and the snow that is on the way to the mountains.